Now, Africa's energy landscape is expected to expand through a mix of renewables and fossil fuels with a remarkable rise next year as CapEx spend on various projects gets underway. Energy, capital and power highlight six trends that will shape the continent's energy landscape moving forward. The organization CEO James Chester joins us with insight on those factors. Thank you so much for your time, James. I actually want to start off with a kind of lens that we need to be looking at the uh, evolution of uh, Africa's landscape. Is it through uh, f fossil fuels, through uh, renewable uh, energy or through a mix of both? And also what level uh, in terms of the composition of fossil fuels versus renewable energy? Uh, thank you very much. Well, for, in, in our view, uh, the lens that we should be looking uh, at this through is that there is a lot of investment left to be done in Africa, uh, whether that's in renewables or hydrogen or fossil fuels or, or anything that you care to mention. Um, and the, the demand is there. There are hundreds of millions of people on this continent who do not have access to electricity. And that's really what should be driving um, uh, a change and driving that investment and, and all solutions must be on the table uh, as, as they are. And there are some great examples all over Africa to look at. Ah, all right. Well, let's actually take a look at what uh, looks like uh, could be uh, could form the bulk of the uh, energy mix in Africa in, in the longer term. Um, we should be looking at natural gas. We should expect natural gas to form the base load of power uh, for Africa going forward. Uh, of course, uh, renewables are very, very important. There are a number of fantastic projects in South Africa and around the continent. Um, but natural gas is tremendously exciting uh, in terms of generating, uh, generating revenues, uh, fueling industry, um, creating jobs through industry, and generating electricity. So as an example, um, we we uh, we have a great event that we do in Senegal. I was just in Senegal uh, yesterday, uh, mm -hmm. and there they're about to launch uh, the GTA project, uh, mm -hmm. and that's going to be just one of the transformative projects that they are doing. And there are so many more like that. Just looking at natural gas, where would you classify it? Is it um, you know a gateway, a source of energy into renewables? Is it part of renewables? Uh, gas is not part of renewables, but it, uh, some people call it a transition fuel. Okay. Um, we would uh, we would definitely say that gas has uh, fantastic advantages in its own right, as I said, as a baseload fuel. Uh, and there is a lot of gas uh, on the African continent on, and just offshore, uh, which is which is there and it's ready to be to be used. Hmm. And how much energy should we actually be putting then into, uh, you know, including renewable sources of energy and which ones would be the low hanging fruits? Uh, well, every country has its own advantages and South Africa is one of the lucky places that uh, that has incredible potential in solar and wind. Mm -hmm. um, we've also seen, you know, attached to renewables is the requirement for battery storage. Uh, there's there are there are great projects in the pipeline in South Africa. So there's a lot to be uh, unlocked um, mm -hmm. in South Africa and across the SADC region. Um, so we would hope to see that you know, regulation and policy and incentivizing structures are put in place so that so that companies can actually get the work done because they do want to uh, come in and get the work done. And a great example of that is definitely, uh, I think, uh, Namibia, where yeah. you see a range of projects and a very kind of um, incentivizing environment um, being being laid out. What about green hydrogen? Because there's a lot of buzz going on around that and how we need to create a green hydrogen uh, economy. Talk to us about, you know, the kind of participation that you are seeing in Africa in that effort. There's a great deal of interest from Europe uh, in investing in green hydrogen. Uh, we mentioned Namibia just now. That's mm -hmm. definitely a, a very interesting place. Also Mauritania. Uh, so green hydrogen is is really uh, an incredible opportunity for a lot of African countries, and it brings together uh, a lot of the benefits of renewables um, and can integrate with existing technologies. So, you know, the the, the investor countries are interested, and in, and mm -hmm. green hydrogen or hydrogen in general uh, is a great opportunity, including again in South Africa, where there's been a lot of good work done. Um, on the hydrogen front as well. Yeah, and actually, what exploration uh, opportunities uh, should be unlocked here? 
Uh, definitely the last few years, there have been some fantastic exploration successes offshore uh, Africa. Uh, this, this goes back to creating uh, the incentivizing environment uh, for companies to do that. Uh, this is a global marketplace for, for exploration. Mm -hmm. um, when the time is right uh, and the companies are interested, you really have to seize on that opportunity. Uh, and so a good example of that um, may be uh, Ivory Coast, where any just made a great discovery and is, is bringing that to production. So, you know, you want to create a situation where you can incentivize the exploration, which is incredibly expensive. Uh, and then take that to production very quickly with the government and the companies working hand in hand and ultimately creating jobs, opportunity and generating power uh, to, to fuel economies. Ah. Well, uh, James, uh, talk to me about uh, clean cooking initiatives, because uh, for me, this is, uh, you know, I always hear about it, but it seems like something that is far away from you. What do we mean by clean cooking initiatives? And also, you know, what level is Africa in, in terms of, uh, you know, going in the direction of that effort? Well, I think... Clean cooking is one of those areas where, you know, you don't need a revolution uh, in order to make a, a great change. So it's it may not be something which applies to every area in Africa, but uh, in West Africa, for example, okay. in places like Ghana, um, Nigeria, uh, these are using LPG and having these clean cooking initiatives, which are, again, supported um, by international energy companies as well. That can be uh, that can be life changing in some areas and that can really change um, the availability of energy for for households and uh, clean up the local environment. So, you know, it's it's very important. And as I said, you don't need a revolution. Mm -hmm. LPG is not a technology that's that's brand new, um, but it can be really impactful and, and and improve the quality of life for a lot of people. Ah, all right. Well, actually, I mean, what does this all hinge on? Does it all hinge on a collaboration, particularly between uh, the private and uh, public sector? And where are we in that? Uh, absolutely, yeah. It, it, it hinges on the collaboration. It, it hinges on good, uh, good policy yeah. uh, on governments creating an incentivizing environment. Because at the end of the, the day, the, the investors are, are looking at a global marketplace and they will go where they will get uh, mm. returns and they will go where they are received uh, yeah. received the best ah. so the 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 relationship has to be there and you know we we definitely see uh, even in the most challenging environments that it's possible to build those relationships and, and have government and the private sector work together and that's definitely for the benefit of everybody in the end. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and giving us insights on that, James. Uh, that was James Chester, CEO of Energy Capital and Power.